my channel The Sunset House. My name is Catherine. I am now 38 weeks pregnant and by the time this video is out, I think I might be very close to labor or have already given birth. So I think now it is the right time to talk about how we prepared our house to welcome the newborn. Time really flies and now it's almost the end of my pregnancy journey. It's difficult for me to put in words and express how I feel about the life changes I will encounter in the next couple of months. Um, as new parent, my husband and I knew it's still a long way to go and the preparation for a newborn is never enough, either financially, physically or psychologically. However, I still decided to share my personal experience um, how we prepped our place to welcome our first child as a first-time parent. Hopefully the excitement as new parents will bring joy and happiness to all of you. For a newborn baby, there are three main activities that they do during the day. Feed, wake and sleep. Sleeping definitely takes the majority of the time, 17 to 18 hours a day. Feeding is equally important because they need the nutrition to gain weight. Compared to feeding and sleeping, playtime is relatively short. Therefore, we have prepared both the nursery and our master bedroom with a sleeping area, set up changing station on each floor, and also reorganized our kitchen to make it ready for milk preparation. Let's go through all of them one by one. First is of course the nursery. We kept the nursery relatively simple and used the relaxing color scheme to decorate it up. And this room is south facing and it can have very strong light during the day if we're lucky enough to have some sunshine in London. So that's why we have installed window shutter to keep the room dark if needed. On this side, it is the theme wall of the nursery. You might have already seen this on my last week's video, What's in my hospital bag. I also put a link right here. Go and have a look if you're interested. I've chosen the animal pattern as the wallpaper because I guess kids love animals and my husband and I love safaris as well. So we decided to bring a little bit of the nature back home. Here is one of the two sleeping areas that we have set up in this house. Later on, we'll have a proper baby bed, which can be converted to a toddler bed later when needed. But now I think the Prem Carry Cot will do the job. This one is from a brand called Inglesina, an Italian brand. Actually, we got this one gifted by one of our family members who don't need it anymore. Lucky us. Um, the cot of this brand is very generous. It's larger than most of the cot that you can find on the market. It can sleep a baby up to six months old. So I think I will try to use this one during the day to put her to sleep. The purpose is really to familiarize herself with her own room. So hopefully in a couple of months time when we need to transfer her from our bedroom down to her own room, she'll be less fussy, but who knows? For the nursing station, I didn't go for a rocking chair. Instead, I bought this sofa bed from mate.com. It can serve as a nursing chair during the day. And later on, if she's sick and I need to be close to her during the night, this one can also be turned into a sofa bed for me to sleep in the same room with her. For the books, I've got this revolving bookshelf. Actually, I quite like this one. It has a two storage system. The racks on the two sides enable you to see the front covers of the book. I can put books that are frequently read at the time being so you can see clearly which book is what. And in the middle, it is the normal bookshelf designs where you can only see the spines of the book. It is very deep so you can put two rows of book on each level. The divider in the middle helps divide the space which doubles up the amount of books that you can store. Honestly, this bookshelf can store hundreds of books. So hopefully it can serve us for quite a long while before we need to upgrade for a bigger one. Then turn to this side is a drawer dresser where we store all the baby clothes. I didn't buy a new drawer dresser which is specifically designed for baby room because we've got this one from our previous flat. It is quite good and it's made of solid wood which has absolutely no pollution. This was the original look of the dresser. My husband and I upcycled it by painting and changing the drawer handles. 
In addition, the top of the dresser can also be used as a changing station. I got this rubber changing mat from Schnangel. It is very soft and it's waterproof. If it gets dirty, I just need to rinse it off under the running water instead of washing the linen cover. Um, I don't know how messy it will be after the baby is born, but I guess there's nothing wrong to avoid as much washing as possible. And in here, I prepared a basket where I store all the nappies and nappy sacks and all the cotton wool um, to clean the baby. Over the dresser, we have installed this photo rack. It is from IKEA. And also we prepared some photo frames, which they are still now empty, but I'm pretty sure they will be filled up quite quickly after the baby is born. Going on to this side, we installed another photo rack where I want to put some decorations. Then I realized we can also put the baby monitor in here as well. The height happens to work perfectly with a cot position. This baby monitor is from Motorola. Actually, it is the one that we once bought for our family member and they now gifted it back to us after they finished using it. How amazing is that? It helps us to save money and also reduce the pollution to the environment. All right, that's a wrap for the nursery. I don't think she'll spend a lot of time in here because for the first six months, it is suggested by the hospital and Public Health England that the baby should sleep in the same room as their caregiver, um, but in a separate bed. So the second sleeping area that we have set up is of course our master bedroom. Let's go. We will use this next to me crib by Chico. This one is kindly offered by one of our friends again. We read online that some parents have complained about the hardness of the mattress. So we have tried to soften it by adding some very thin duvet in here and then wrap it around with fitted beddings to make it tight. And also the beddings will not move easily. Now it feels definitely softer than the original mattress. However, I don't want to make the mattress too fluffy or soft. Otherwise, it will increase the risk of seeds, sudden infant death syndrome. I guess no parent wants that. I think we'll start with this setup and see how it goes. And of course, I'll need to have a simple changing station for the night to change the baby. So that's why I've got this travel changing mat here. Um, I'll put it either on the bed or on the countertop right here to change the baby. And also I prepared more nappies for the convenience. I don't know yet, I probably will figure out a better routine after the baby is here. Okay, that's everything for now for the master bedroom. Now let's go downstairs to see what's been set up in the living room. We got offered a sleepy head from our friend, so we think why not just put it on the ground floor for supervised lounging during the day. This is our living room. Under the window, I made some bespoke storage furniture. It also serves as a sitting bench when we have friends around. Compared to the sofa, this bench is definitely more solid and stable, so I just put the sleepy head here to test it out. However, we all have to be very careful with the safety warning on this product. It is not suggested to use as a crib or bed because of the risk of seeds. Um, I guess it is due to the raised edge on both sides, so the use has to be always supervised by caregivers or parents. Um, however, it is indeed a very good tool to free up your hand during the day. And in the meanwhile, it will make the baby very comfy inside it. One of our friends who also live in multi-level houses gave us a very good tip about changing station. She said you might want to set up another changing station on the ground floor because that's where adults spend most of their time at during the day. So I bought another changing mat. This one is a foam one with a UPVC cover and similar to the rubber one I got in the nursery, it can be easily wiped off if it gets dirty. And of course, on the drawers down below, I got more nappies. <laughs> As you can see, I tried to set up everything to serve the convenience and efficiency to the maximum I can imagine. And hopefully this can get us a relatively easy and good start as new parents. Okay, we've covered the nursery, our master bedroom and the downstairs setup. Now let's go to the kitchen to take a look. I want to breastfeed, so in theory, I shouldn't be needing any bottles or formula-related products. However, who knows how things will work out. Therefore, the other day, I reorganized our kitchen and spared some room for bottles, sterilizer, and other gadgets. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't watched my pantry organization video, you can click the link in here if you're interested. For the kitchen organization video, it will be uploaded later, so please stay tuned. 
I have prepped this corner in the kitchen for the milk preparation. Here I've got a baby formula kettle with built-in thermostat. It helps to keep the boiled water at a desired temperature up to 24 hours, which means in the middle of the night, I don't need to wait for the boiling water to cool down before I prepare for the milk. I think this will be a lifesaver if I decide to bottle feed the baby. Secondly, I've got this milk warmer. It can warm up milk in either storage bag or milk bottles. Unlike microwaves, it can evenly warm up the milk within the container so the baby won't be burnt. Last but not the least is this sterilizer and dryer. This one can sterilize bottles and accessories within one hour. At the very beginning, I was quite horrified by the size because look at it, it's quite huge. However, I think it's quite necessary because for the smaller sterilizers on the market, it can't fit a lot of bottles, especially larger bottles later on if you still decide to sterilize for the baby before the milk prepping. All right, thanks for staying with me for this newborn house prepping tour. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment box below. Also, if you have suggestions for new parents, please don't hesitate to let me know as well. Before you go, don't forget to give me a thumb up and subscribe me if you like my video or find it helpful. In the end, I wish everyone a happy new year and I will see you in the new year next Friday, 7 p.m. back in my channel. Thank you guys, bye bye.